There is a tiny difference here. Uh, okay, well, the people doing this, here is heat maps. Let me see. If you look here, there is something orangey here and something reddish. And uh, this is called heat maps. Uh, it basically means uh, places where there are discussions. You can visualize that there is a lot of discussion by creating the background color from, say, yellow to orange to red, even to black, if there's very much heated discussion. Okay. What does the button mean with that? It means that anywhere you should be able to see in the text that there is something going on and then join. This is actually a, something, this is a tool that exists, that does this. There are several actually. Uh, Software Foundation made a tool called SCET uh, during their feedback process around, around 2003. And based on that, uh, there are some guys in, in Paris uh, made something called COMT or COMT.com, which uh, does the same thing in a nice manner. This is how uh, the Free Software Foundation tool looks like. And this is how uh, Comet uh, looks like. You get the picture. This is existing um, available tools today. Uh, I, I like this, I want this. Alright, uh, how about the people in the hats? You know, the ones in the left here. Uh, they need to do something, then they get some coins too. This is the same document, but there's some free space on the right there where we can put a discussion, a specific one. Say, for example, uh, something related to that area of the text. Now, there might be several issues raised to that text, so we add a tiny little bit on uh, uh, the top right there to uh, let people select which topic they want to look at right now and then go through it. Uh, if there are lots of discussions, then it's nice to just switch from one to the next one. And then, as you read it, make it possible to edit the text based on that feedback. That's it, on the top there. This is about it. Alright, uh, okay, nice pictures. Uh, I'll show you the point. My point here is that, okay, I'll have to do something first to get to my point, I'm sorry. Uh, writing textbook is hard. Writing textbooks are hard. This is a, a, a small idea of what a good author has to think about in order to write a good textbook. It's not just writing the words in the right sequence. It's about telling good stories. It's uh, and how to make it easy to read. How it's about scannability. It's about uh, good stories and the right amount of homework and uh, creative writing and all kinds of stuff. Okay, so we could say having a system like this is, uh, makes that kind of job easier, but nah. So what? Like, uh, people have been writing this for, for years, hundreds of years. This is nothing. Here's the real point. This is what the, I've been building up to. Remember this picture here? This is the usage viewpoint. We add something we can call aspects. Here it's, I add something we can call, it says in there. There might be several aspects. There might be a summary aspect, a short word, words aspect for dyslexics. It might be a, an aspect, a version of the text for parents. This is what we mean with polyscopic documents. We mean aspects. This is about telling the same narrative, the same story, but doing it in different ways according to the needs of the reader. This is the point. So if you are struggling, if somebody is struggling with the dyslexia, it means there is a word for a, 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 a version of the text for those people. 
so they can get through the thin text in the same the space as the rest of the others in the classroom. Uh, if you are a fast reader and you quickly get bored because there's too, too, too little material for you, why not add more details? Or if you have uh, uh, difficulties getting your homework done because there's some trouble at all. Some people have that problem. Uh, get just necessary stuff. How about uh, instructional methods? How about if a teacher thinks that a certain topic is more useful to be told in a certain way and you have textbooks which supports that way of telling it? It could be, uh, say for example, a project uh, instead of a lecture type of activity in the classroom. And with the project, you have lots of kids getting together, doing a presentation of some sort, and you have a textbook which gives you homework or assignments or leads or research material or pointers or whatever which is specifically useful for that setting. Uh, another novel way of thinking here is looking at the content, like telling historic facts in different ways. Say for example, the Second World War as seen from a specific country's viewpoint. How did the Bulgarians feel and experience the Second World War opposed to the Greek, or the Swedes and the Norwegians, or the British and the Germans. And in this, this is pedagogically useful information. And if you add this to kind of a presentation thing, you get very interesting possibilities. And of course, executive summaries. Uh, this is something for parents who want to help their kids with homework. Just read up a little bit. Try to remember what this was all about. Spend some time with the kids. There's a problem here. Uh, those aspects, they can become quite complicated if you are dyslexic and you're interested in Second World War. It means you have to have a Second World War chapter of a certain kind that you're using in the classroom, specifically meant for dyslexics. So there is suddenly a lot more to write, which means the collaborative authoring thing I just showed you actually becomes necessary and useful. That's what we're about, treating those kind of textbooks as free software projects. This is our website. We really want to make this happen. Uh, I've spent my time uh, my oh, and last year now trying to get this up and running, building contacts within the educational sector, finding out how the publishing sector works, uh, giving talks at presentations uh, 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 at world conferences and other conferences. And we need you guys to help. If you, want to, if you think this sounds interesting in some way, please help us. This is, uh, these are the three places where you can uh, get in touch with us. Uh, in the back there you have Slime, which is my partner in crime. It's uh, one out of, uh, well we are kind of four, five, six people doing volunteer work trying to make this happen. Uh, but we need more of all kinds. If you have both, this is a catalyst application with QPD at the bottom, we are thinking about having a Git backend for storing everything, for example. So it's lots of interesting options and cool things to do there, basically. We're having a script, a JavaScript headed from them. Uh, actually, I will show you what we have. This is kind of a bad thing to do, but we do have code, actually. This is a checkout from GitHub. Let's see if we can blow this up a little bit. Alright. Uh, this is a standard Catalyst application. I won't bother writing main tester because we have only four minutes left. 
but I can do this. Thank you. 